Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Wooler. I want to make sure the next time you do blood testing for your child that certain things are checked for because they're often not. If you go to your pediatrician and they want to do some blood work, um, well-meaning with their approach, but they'll often do what's called a comprehensive metabolic panel, uh, a, comp a complete blood count with differential to look at the immune function, and maybe they might order, if it's not part of the comprehensive metabolic panel, a liver profile. All useful information. What I have found, though, is that many kids on the autism spectrum need some additional things looked at. One is iron. Um, many kids can be iron deficient, and iron deficiency is a problem because iron is utilized within hemoglobin to help bind oxygen, and oxygen obviously is necessary for metabolic act activity at the cellular level, particularly within the brain. So we need an adequate supply of iron. So minimally, doing a serum iron and what's called a serum ferritin test is important. Also, vitamin D. A lot of information with respect to vitamin D problems in autism, and really vitamin D deficiencies in many people. Minimally, you should do what's called a 25 OHD test, which is the active form of vitamin D. And we're looking for levels upwards of 70 to 80 nanograms per ml with respect to optimal levels of vitamin D for autism. And there's a lot of information about that. So vitamin D test is important too. I often see parents come into my practice with what looks like a comprehensive blood analysis, but often the doctor forgets to do a total cholesterol. Now you can do a total cholesterol or a lipid panel. A lipid panel is also going to give you the LDL and the HDL and the triglyceride numbers, which is fine. But when we look specifically at autism, what we're primarily looking at is a decrease in total cholesterol. So minimally just doing a total cholesterol test, and any lab can do that, so it's not expensive. And we're looking ideally for levels upwards of 160 to 170. I often find that many kids in the spectrum are quite low, 110, 100, and below. And then finally, if it hasn't been done, do a thyroid test. And, and don't just do a TSH, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone. Make sure minimally you do a TSH, a free T3 and a free T4. Often doctors will just do a TSH and it's not sensitive enough to pick up on subclinical hypothyroidism. Because you can have a normal TSH but it may be that your child is not converting T4 to, to T3. Free T3, free T3 is the physiologically active form of thyroid. So whenever I do a thyroid panel I will do a TSH, a free T3, and a free T4. If there's any concern about an autoimmune thyroid problem, you can always add what's called an anti-TPO or an anti-thyroglobulin antibody. So that's always an option, okay? So think about that the next time your child is having blood tests. You can ask your doctor about that to add those important markers. Thanks.